Goodbye. Yes. Yeah, we got to move on to those things. <laughs> hey, I will call the um, March 8th meeting of the Trees and Greenery Committee to order. And we will go around starting with that. And introduce themselves. Uh, good morning. I'm Pat Richard Adams. Richard Adams. Dennis Sudo. Deb Shag. Joanna Kelly, Peter Walkman, Max Wigger, AJ Dupree, Michael Griffin, uh, Peter Rice. Thank you. Um, we have the minutes of the uh, February 23rd meeting. Uh, do you have a chance to look at that? Any questions? Corrections? Well written. Okay. Uh, we have three annual requests uh, Commercial Alley, and um, I don't know. David, you want to do that? Uh, Max? Uh, Scott, David, on the rest of the group. Yeah, this is what you're going to do. Oh, it's always happy to be. Thanks, Dave. It's so good. Good morning. <laughs> I'm here again for another tree removal request. Uh, we are working collaboratively with. Pretty much every utility company that works in the city this year to do a um, an upgrade on Commercial Alley and Market Street. So there's two different things going on, but we're here today for Commercial Alley. So this spring, about a month from now, um, Eversource uh, and uh, their partners, which are uh, consolidated phone company, Comcast, cable company, are going to be running conduit through commercial alley and the reason why they're doing that is to remove the overhead wires in commercial alley so when the city redid market square back in the 70s or late 60s early 70s they moved all the wires to the back streets Porter street got wires fleet street got wires the hollow got wires part of that that happened was that they still had to feed some of these buildings that are in commercial alley. So what they did was they planted one pole in the middle of commercial alley. And then like a spider's web, they go out to all the different buildings. And a lot of those wires are actually traveling over other buildings and that no longer meets the electrical code. So Eversource is funding most of the work in commercial alley. Um, the other two companies are are subsidiary to them. They're paying for a little bit of it. Basically, it's an Eversource project. Uh, and the project entails um, digging from Market Street, where there's already underground power was installed last spring. Out in front of Kennedy Gallery, there's a, there's a vault. There's a, there's a vault in front of uh, where Beiju used to be. And um, from those sources, uh, underground power will be fed through Commercial Alley. And then they'll literally, uh, so all the conduit will be, it'll be all the conduit underground. They're going to eliminate all the overhead wires. And each building, they'll, they'll core the wall. They'll penetrate into each building underground so that um, there's no wires in Commercial Alley. The reason why we're here is um, the city did a project in Commercial Alley that most of you can probably remember. Uh, I know I do, because uh, I was there. And it was difficult to work in commercial alley because it's so narrow. But um, back about 14 years ago, I guess it was, we, uh, we ran drainage in commercial alley because before that, uh, it was like a skating rink in there every winter. All the downspouts came down and the whole thing was ice all the time. It was completely inhospitable. And, uh, when we did that, we were able to get around the tree that we're here for today uh, because we ran the drain pipe about this far off the, the building on the other side and we were able to get through the tree roots. So, um, and then we rebuilt the work and there's a lovely picture out in the, in the, uh, in the entranceway of the city hall. It actually shows the tree here that we're talking about today, but um, 
that tree is, has gotten larger. Um, the brick surface that we built is still heating up because the tree is getting bigger, the, the, the roots are getting bigger and the surface no longer needs code as far as um, grade. It's too steep going sideways here. If you're in a wheelchair, if you were in a wheelchair and you were going um, through the alleyway, you would be well like that situation. But the ADA only allows us to go at a quarter of an inch per foot. That's the maximum for us to keep going out. The slope that's there today is probably it's probably four or five inches on one side, higher than the other side. So because of the ADA grade issues, and because we have to run this doctor bag, which is the uh, average source needs to run eight five inch tubes through there, plus the two sets of conduit for the Comcast and the consolidated. So by the time you're done, you're going to have this package of conduit that's probably about this big that's going to have to run closer to the tree now because the drainage is still there. The drainage still has to function. So we think that. Um, in all likelihood, the roots are going to get impacted to the point that um, the tree will be unstable and may fall. If we were able to get through there, um, so that's issue one is basically unstabilizing the tree because of the proximity of the trunk of the tree to where the, where the duck bank has to go. And then the secondary issue is the cross slope on the sidewalk. So for these reasons, um, we're here with our partner. Today, uh, Eversource is uh, is offering to take down the tree. They they tried to take down the tree before. They've been here about this tree before, and because of the overhead wires, they wanted to take it down a while ago. Um, but it was stayed at the time. So uh, that's why we're here. Anybody have questions for me? Any questions for David? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And David, it's correct that the tree was here before. Yes. I don't know how many years ago, but um, we, were, ago. we were quite reluctant to um, have it removed, and it wasn't removed. And um, um, so, but now the really quite a different situation. Yeah. Um, do we have a motion to recommend you? Know? Then I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Uh, okay. And now that Peter brought it up, it's even bigger. Yeah. Really anticipated. Nice thing. I did it too. Commercial alley. Bye, Scott. What an I'll easy time to get to The market street improvements have been done. Um, uh, as Peter pointed out, uh, it wasn't a certain commercial alley in the early 70s. It was more alley and less commercial. Uh, and Joe Sartell bought the building and created all the smaller shots. Mm -hmm. So I think, why didn't I think of that? But, um, <laughs> just a side note of some folks, Peter and I were talking on the hallway. Um, I did talk with Scott and Bob. Uh, this tree, the wood in it's not going to be great, but we're going to try to repurpose some of this wood. Uh, so I was sort of that work with Scott um, on you know, salvaging some of this wood. So we will mill some of this wood back in our place. Okay. We're just going to find out where we're going to mill it. But we haven't figured that part out yet. Um, but we will be able to salvage some wood out of the street. We might have something good for that. Maybe you would mention the home booth, not the home booth part, but you know, maybe something can be yeah. <laughs> utilized. Okay. I uh, feel it's, it's not it's not black locust. Black locust is extremely rough resistant. I think locust is okay. Uh, better than pine for outside, but you know, still not a great outside wood uh, unless it's you know stained or polished or you know something that could uh, Black locust is wood that you know people come to think of as it never rots. Right. I think it's beautiful. I bet the bark on the trees. It's, it's, yes. And we've gotten the benefit out of it for the last, you know, yes. 12 plus whatever, 15 years. Yeah. If this bigger trench goes through, you're going to lose, you know, yeah. a good half the roots. 
Uh, so then the tree is doomed to you know, some kind of future future existence. Okay, hey, um, Walsted Lane, again to the rose. Who came up with that name? <laughs> Walter Lane? I don't know. <laughs> that's not a founder? That's, that's, no, that's, that was the, the copy of Walsh and Pond. John had, oh. had a sign up there. He is Walsh and Pond, the last, uh, first Pond, and the last guy. What's maybe being that last guy? I believe the planning board ended up selecting that. Originally, the alternative name that was less acceptable than uh, a couple of years ago. Hmm. Actually, at Walker at the time, I think, encouraged to use a historical name. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is a basically a line of sight issue for the residents of Walford Lane leaving the road onto Banfield. Uh, just the line of sight issue. They've already gone through and machined out a lot of like the, the small brush, but this with these removed, line of sight will be cleared up and then it will also allow for better maintenance in the future. I think there was two of them. There was so, um, I think I posted four separate or five separate instances, but um, one is a three stem tree, yeah. one, one stem is dead out of that three. That's the first one. One of them is like a six to seven inch maple, you know, further up that same side. Uh, and there's actually one that blew flying on the south side of that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I didn't post every single instance, but it's there. I mean, they're. So it's on another side. Yeah. It's on the other side of the entrance. Yeah. It's six, six, seven, eight. Six stems. Oh, yeah. One of them. into there and out just so I could have that experience. Yeah. And I didn't find that experience and okay. visions and find if you if you can't right so you line up with the grade stakes somebody put in grade stakes you know yes. there, when you look at this yeah. it's not where the stop sign is it's where you have to sort of creep ahead to see yeah. to see where you're going the, um but the trees are you know they're right there the, the challenge is that Posted um, at a slower speed than yeah. actually people are traveling at. It. Uh, so it's it's a very you know it's a dangerous uh, intersection. So when I was posting those trees, I actually turned onto Walter Parks off to the side. And when I was leaving, there is a bend. If you if you're looking toward uh, Beverly Hill Road, there's a little bit of a bend, and a car was cruising, and I was well out into the into Banfield to yeah. to make my yeah. turn and yeah. they came yeah. out of nowhere. So I at that point I was like, all right, this is practically a no-brainer for us. If it's if it's helpful for, for the residents, it'd be I mean it's yeah. anything that helps help them out. I think I talked to a few people just because I know them. Um, but they said that you know they're in and out of there often, and it would be less covering and, and less tricky. And some people were older, and they would appreciate that. So. And just again, the maintenance piece—it's it's difficult to. <laughs> And um, speaking to so uh, in our water shop, the, the operators who operate the, the machinery that does do the brush clearing, it will be a lot easier for them in the future to maintain that area okay. if those streets are out. So it's a long journey as well. Okay, I move to remove <laughs> that motion. Any discussion? Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 okay. Um, landscape plan approval. Dragon plan. What do you guys want? Last time I was here. Oh, right. yeah. 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 Is this good? Yeah, that's actually a good spot. Video. Peter, I didn't send you an email this morning just to have the, the uh, plan of mine. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. That's 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 oh, I see. Okay. Uh, it's the same time that's yeah. being handed out now. So. Yeah. So it would be nice. Can you have uh, an answer to it It would just be on my. My cell phone, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is also my I figured they better not give me too much for too little. Okay. It's nice if you talk about planting trees. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Josh.
Uh, my name is Bob Ewling, and I'm a Calvert's and Kyan Bond studio with the landscape architect and Kyan Bond. Um, and we are working on the project with the Pier Street, Russell Street, which is a um, rebuilding, uh, mixed use, uh, proposed development. And um, so I gave you a couple things. The, the second package is the formal submission that we gave. The, the package in the front, which is more illustrative, I figured it was more helpful for this, uh, for this conversation. Um, and so I'm going to refer to the, the illustrative package. So I, I included a site plan just so you all had a feel for where we were talking about. So, you know, we're doing, you know, this is essentially about street trees that are along Maplewood on the left hand side. Um, those street trees are in tree rates. Um, Due to the narrowness of the sidewalk between the setback of the building and the curb line and kind of the travel, the travel way along neighborhood and so forth. And then the other trees are in more uh, post to the raised plantings where you've got more exposed to the trees and their health and so forth. I had, had some back and forth with Max about kind of layout and tree species selection and so forth. And so he encouraged us to mix it up a bit more than I probably had originally. And I think so we've got a, we've got a broader blend of trees that we're talking about now. Um, and so again, I think there's there's three trees along Maplewood. And then as you turn along Deer Street, um, adjacent to building number one, we have a raised tree planter, continuous raised tree planter there. And again, we try to, where we can put trees in, uh, continuous soil in the end as much as possible. For their help. Um, and so, because there's not parking and so forth, the long rates at building one, we were able to put the trees in a continuous planter between all four of the trees. Then, you know, the rest of the way down on Deer Street, it's the building two. Those are those are in raised planters, but they're individual planters uh, because we just parking along Deer Street up to the corner of Russell Street. Then, at the corner of Russell Street and Deer Street, we have an open, uh, kind of a civic open space. And there's a lot of grade change that occurs there. So there's kind of seat walls in which we're incorporating seat walls and stairs to create uh, access between the street level and uh, plaza level uh, inboard, uh, and using that as a way of introducing planters there, which will um, which will frame that open space. And then as you move further up Russell Street between buildings two and three, we continue to have street trees up along that edge. Then um, we have a also have a a public space um, that is kind of a continuation of this kind of grand ballet through the city um, that starts with kind of the African uh, memorial and continues up through the uh, Vaughn Mall and so forth and Port Vaughan Place and continues up here. And, and we call it the Muse. Um, and that space uh, has two kind of seating areas off of it. And the idea is adjacent to building two, where at ground level we're parking, we're, we're introducing a some trees from that area as well uh, to make that space uh, inviting and hospitable. So that was that's kind of an overview. And turning to page two, this gives you more of a view of okay, what are the hidden species and where are they located? So then um, on page two, kind of doing that same walkthrough on maple, maple wood, we were looking at putting in regal prints oak, which are more of an upright decision. Tree again, given kind of the nature of the road uh, vehicles travel right along the curb lines, we wanted to make sure the trees were more vertical so that the ends weren't being clipped and, and they're not right up against the building. So uh, that species there, then as you turn along Deer Street, um, the, the kind of dark blue is the, is three sweet gum um, in the raised planter adjacent to building number one, and then as we move kind of to the right. The next, uh, the next layout. And so the layout here, we kind of use the corner of Deer Street and Russell Street as kind of a center line because that use that public open space as a center line and did a layout. So it's kind of symmetrical off of that. So the, the three trees at the corner of Deer and Russell are ginkgo. So they frame that open space. And then to either side of it, there are two, um, uh, either side is two Freeman eye maple, which again are maples, but they're more. Of an upright maple in nature. Uh, and then to the right of that and to the left of that uh, are Kentucky coffee trees, and those are in the light blue color. And then um, further down Russell Street, 
towards Market Street, uh, we put uh, four Hackberry um, kind of at that, at that corner of their section down there. Then if we come back to the Muse, we're proposing to have um, some gray along the building there, bracketed by um, witch hazels at the end, so it gets good winter color there. And then in between buildings two and three, um, there's a little open space where, you, where well, it's a shared pedestrian vehicular space there. At the back of that, we're proposing some dog woods in that space. So I think then, and then I, don't know if you, I apologize, I didn't reference it, but if you have any questions about you know, what those trees look like, I gave you a snapshot of this one. Yeah. 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 Those four hackers you see them on the phone right Yes, the uh, building is on that tall. It's a sharing mm -hmm. right across the street. So the trees growing in the planters, I mean, that works out okay for the root system? In our experience, it does. I like, I mean, the, the idea of kind of having a little bit of a raised planter because it then it avoids people walking on the on the Soil and back in and try to provide as continuous of a root system as well. I think we've got the planters are like 16 feet long by 6 feet wide. So it's a continuous run that helps a lot because it's dead space, essentially in the middle. Yeah. And it keeps all the sidewalk plows and shovels and all the, all the banging and you know all that kind of stuff away. So it does help a lot. Okay, great. Um, I forget the name of the. Um, Expansion areas that go on our sidewalks. Um, so civil cells. Are you putting our civil cells around um, any of these? It's just it's just sort of within the, within the area. We've had good experience with the civil cells. Mm -hmm. um, we found that the sidewalks haven't settled around them. Um, I would I would recommend people get doing that. I mean, these there's no overhead utilities um, along this area. There's a potential for the trees to to grow for quite some time. Um, so I would think you know. Giving it the best uh, chance possible would be beneficial. These are the three, like the three purple spot. There's one continuous open bed, correct? Yeah. yeah. So it's like if you look at there's a sidewalk in between. If you look at the black and white section, like yeah. on page two, there's been a there's a plus section on the page three side. Yeah. So the page three is the one that we have. And how tall is it? I think that's it. Yeah. Um, so it's detail three on page L and from the Regal oaks, and I think that's it's like in Port Walk, which are these well. Are those regal oaks in Port Walk? Yes. Uh, I'm not, I don't think we have much to do with Port Walk. Right. So I'm not entirely sure. I don't really, yeah, I don't really remember that way. <laughs> yeah, for what it's worth, we've had really good success planting the regal oak variety for our planting operations in the city. So. I really appreciate uh, right now the witch hazel. So I really appreciate you. Yes, I see a little bit of those. spring. Rain. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. I yeah, right. just saw by Also, appreciate you the hackberry, which are the exposed wildlife. Um, a lot of berries and birds. I'm okay with it. Um, and the Kentucky coffee tree, I've read that that's poisonous to dogs. The bark, the bark, I don't know. I don't know if that's, I just read that. I, I don't know if that's something that we think about. Uh, it's actually the first I've heard of it. I don't know if I can comment on that. I don't know if I can comment on that. I have a dog that chews on trees. So that's why I'm specific to that. Not city trees. Well, to be nitpicky, if I could ask a question about one of the perennial choices, because I can't really see where they're going. Um, the lily turf mm -hmm. is an invasive plant, so I'm just wondering. Um, In terms of the right, these spaghetti, it's probably, I mean, 
it's underneath the street trees. I mean, often we plant that because we find that it's, you know, it is uh, very durable and it kind of has kind of ever good color to it. It's not, it would be contained within that granite curb area. Um, and, you know, using the urban condition like this, we find it. So it's not going to get out of that scenario. It's basically within, it's in a, a street tree plant. It's in the front of the so that it's not just bare. What does the term match mean in this context? Uh, match probably means so that they have a similar look in the past. Size and yeah. yeah, so when you're going to select them at the nursery, you might be trying to get what is there. And, and it could be for those two that's in relation to the ginkgos, the idea is that they're kind of, there's four of them or they're grabbing that space. So you want them to kind of look of a similar kind of appearance. That's more of a note to the contract. Trees. Oh, trees. I think your species selection is good. Uh, yeah. I'm aware of only one hackberry. So maybe you are a hackberry guy. Yeah. <laughs> in part because I read that in the 1990s, uh, the Harvard Yard uh, had a lot of trees removed and the uh, <clears throat> Replace them from the left, very good lot of that beds. Yeah, they're considered very urban problems. It's just that they're in finding them is hard enough to get it, encouraging more nurseries to grow them is a good thing. Fleet gum considered a messy. This is probably a, a fleetless one. Interesting. What's my favorite? I do want to applaud you for your choices of native plant material. I was really thrilled to see that. Uh, uh, Pat and I did, uh, you know, zero in on the lily turf um, pretty, not too quickly, actually, not both around, but I really applaud that. I, I, I just as a sidebar uh, of the um, Garden Club of America is working on another initiative this season is to uh, make April the native uh, plant month. And so we've sent a proclamation to Governor Sununu as well as everyone across the nation out to the uh, So this is right up uh, everyone's alley to our benefit. Uh, it's easy to have. Thank you. I appreciate that. This could be a really nice template for other developers as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. I'd like to see more of it. Thank you. Questions or comments? Well, I, I, you know, one word to look at when you look at this is it's, it's awesome. Yeah, this this is it's awesome, and it's one of the best presentations we've ever had. Okay. Uh, it's very clear. I like I like the connection to Fort Worth Place. I know some people, not people on the table, but people lament the loss of Oak Plus, but then I say, Oh, you mean yeah. the great mall had four acres of pavement, not a damn tree, not a blade of grass. And uh, uh, I love the AMP. I yeah. Before my time. <laughs> This is um it, it, it's it's a yeah. and what's what is this timeline? What are we talking about? Uh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean they're 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 trying to work through pricing and so you know, construction costs being high and so forth. So I think they're doing that. I think there's there's the civil our civil engineers are still working with the city with some various planning and so Really has yeah. so, so. final approval. It's the yeah. Yeah. Is it? It's is it? It's it. Most of the city is it? Um, it's my friend uh, Daniel. Daniel has to us scary. Well, they, I have to say, I was one of the naysayers when the original proposal from Harbor Corp and um, it was not part of the lawsuit, however. And uh, this was so pleasing to see um, the. Um, OSHA properties come in and then uh, they knew what the problem was in the beginning and they they just attacked it with separating this one mammoth 600 foot long building into three and which was even one more than we had hoped for when Chris Thompson owned the property so yeah right this is I mean 
the property is privately owned and it will be developed. And this is the best we could hope for, I think. I mean, it will still be big, but uh, yeah, we're happy with it. When, um, so if there is a big departure from what you presented, since this is so far out, do we get to look at it again or? Yeah, only if they change the proposal of yeah. what's been already been approved, would it, would it, yeah. it, would it, it would likely be an administrative change unless it was a wholesale, you know, unless they were doing a significant change, unless this committee does not approve this. If you say right now you're not approving it, you have to come back. So, any other questions, comments? Uh, you ready to uh, go? Yeah. I, I move to approve. And in the second, any discussion? I'm going to put it in that we're approving this because I think it's a great plan. I just want to work with Max because there's going to be something that right. no bad. Right. construction never go. <laughs> So they're gonna to have to change the tree species, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna to have to have something. They're gonna to have to know, you know, now. You know, you know leave that max of, you know, max of hands to do that. So, do we want to add anything about solar cells? I, I, you know, AJ just corrected me or, or just informed me that there was adequate soil volume. I looked at that. They're keeping open trenches. Solar cells are a way to keep an open trench for low grade when you have to put on a lot of sidewalks and a lot of papers. Um, it's just a, you know, no, no crate on the ground. Very expensive, no great underground, <laughs> um, but he just keep it open, a completely open trench. So the open trench solves that volume generation. Where the silver cells been done in the city? Uh, Street, 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 Stronger Street, across from like uh, Daniel Street. Street. Mm -hmm. well, you know, just we just had no room left. But it's so you do it the whole way between face building and back to group. Uh, we did as much as we could on those. Pretty much around 360 around it, you know, such a curb line and into the full width of the sidewalk. Yeah. It worked out well. Yeah, you know, I'm not seeing any settlement on the site. It's been what, 10 years, 12 years, 13, 14 years. Yeah, it's been since we did uh, State Street, which was uh, it's been ten years ago. Um, I did uh, three three tips. Mm -hmm. you know, since she hit that for three months, we will make sure we did research on that, but just to increase that slow mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't done too many. We've done a couple, but we haven't done too many, so it's good to hear. You know, yeah, it's, it's a sidewalk so far. Yeah, that's what makes the issues long term. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the key, the key to is building your sidewalks yep. properly, mm -hmm. you know, which when you, when you, when you have a vehicle, you know, Couple of times going on in the sidewalk, you need to make sure you support from right. Well, that's good to hear that it's not settling. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So we have a motion um, to approve uh, with an amendment by AJ that stuff happens and uh, <laughs> so, 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 it's when it does. Um, Speaking from experience, I'm in favor of that motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just after the fact, but condition two point one. What exactly is that? Just the uh, that's site approval. Um, so uh, when that goes to the planning board, they have a, they have an approval with stipulations. Uh -huh. So it's stipulation two point one. That I don't know what that is. It would, so it's it's listed under item three. It's proposed tree repeats planting detail and planting species will require will require approval from the tree committee. There you go. That's the whole. Okay. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Up on that. After we go to yes, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't it's tree planting. Um, city's four hundred. So. Yeah. Um, so Peter, AJ, and myself, we have a meeting on the books next week. Uh, final preparation for the tree giveaway. Where we'll finalize all the details there. Um, yeah, I think as far as we know, it's like April eighth, right? April eighth. Yeah. Oh, so, April 8th. Yeah. So the day before Easter, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Celebration of living, rebirth, all we go. all the above. Yeah. Appropriate for this Easter. Um, yeah. So we're we're feeling. I'm feeling really confident. I can't speak for the other two, but uh, I'm, I'm feeling really. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. <laughs> Um, yeah. the biggest issue is what are we going to have for snow? What are we going to have? You know, what's going to drive? We're going to 
to run a lot of cars for our place, not you know, on our main driveway. Not good, so I'm make sure. And what are the numbers? That's my question. How many, how many signed up so far? Do we, oh, uh, do I need to chit chat around? Last time you, we were over 200, yeah. right? But certainly well over 30, 200. 40. And percent. that would is, yeah, for signups, just to, for, well, just. signups, I think it's, it wasn't like a guaranteed tree, but it was to learn more or to be, uh, um, to be forwarded information once we know more. So uh, for that next meeting, we'll talk about. Uh, having Stephanie yeah, from the send send out all the information to everyone who signed up, and I'm sure it's those numbers are even greater now because uh, several weeks have passed since we had that last update. So I'm imagining we'll be able to give away all these trees, no problem. I have no doubt. Uh, Great. Yeah, and then as far as our operations, uh, yeah, we're we're getting all of our materials together. We have uh, I've locked in all of our sites. We have to. I have to shuffle some around because uh, this leads into uh, what the actual Arbor Day plan is for the 28th uh, is tentatively planting 13 trees down at Little Harbor School with Seed Coast Students for Sustainability. Mm -hmm. a, uh, a student reached out, asked if there was an opportunity to uh, involve herself and others uh, as a, a day of service sort of thing and realizing that it's too good to pass up and have them Help us with our Arbor Day planning things. Uh, walked the an area with Ken Lynchy, um, and yeah, we found 13, 13 sites for trees. So that day, the twenty eighth, it's a Friday. School's out. Um, they're, they're on spring break that entire week, so it's it's almost like the stars are aligning to have a, a cool opportunity for some students, and we can all be a part there and, and do the proclamation and everything down at the school. So oh, great. it's it's turning to a pretty neat event. Wonderful. Yeah. Not letting Damon steal that proclamation from me. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, aside from that, I think I think we're we're in, we're sitting really well with the with the form increase this week. Yeah. Well, can I just ask since I went down to look at uh, this this project here on Deer Street, and I was having a burger at the Burger Bar, and I was looking at those seven trees that are just pathetic. Yeah, that's when What's I happened so when I first place? I mean so when I first started working here over three years ago now, that was the first thing I noticed as I drove through the city, just because I you know I I'm not local, so I never really have been to Portsmouth. And I noticed that entire strip and it's just these decrepit looking trees. And I had talked to Chuck Baxter, uh, the Arborist Foreman at the time, and he's like, yeah, those aren't even city owned trees. And we really have nothing to do with them unless uh, something breaks out and it's over the sidewalk or in the road. That's really the only time we've ever responded to that, to that area. Uh, and working on this plan was kind of a nice full circle moment because I talked to the planners, like I've actually wanted to do something about this for, Quite a number of years, so the fact that I can now have a hand in helping guide this is is really neat. So, yeah, a little anecdote, but I guess. But um, yeah, I've been wanting to address that for a long time. If you have some suggestions about including those, yeah, um, I'd love to contact Jeff Johnston. The fattest guy that is involved in the project, been very responsive. Yeah, I, it's it's been a, a very cool cooperative uh, experience for me. This um, I'm blanking on his name already, but we we had a back and forth for something like a month and a half, just going over species, and being real uh, intentional with our selections and how they designed it. And, you know, I'm talking about on the oh, sorry. on the on the on the other side of the street, the trees that are in tough shape as to if you have a couple of them on, on the people. other side on the other side. Mr. Tracy was suggesting that in very good shape. Street. The ones that I was just talking about, seven trees. Oh, yes. No, and I'm already sorry. I completely misread everything. Uh, yeah, so that we've already talked about removing and replanting a lot of those. And those are all sweet gum varieties. Uh, I've already spoken with Vincent Hayes. Uh, he's one of our, I'm planning. Yeah, uh, inspection enforcement. Uh, yeah. Or site, site yeah. development. Compliance person. Thank you. <laughs> I've already had many conversations with the. Yeah, there we go. And we're we're very we're well aware of the state that those trees are in. And if, yeah. Okay. 
I haven't seen anything happen quite yet. I think they were waiting for spring to pull those and replant them. Oh. And that's something I'll be um, very clued in on and be there for the okay. planting. And the same thing with all these other projects. I, there's a there, the language in here says that I have the right to refuse any treatment. It doesn't look good or planting isn't to our standard. You can have it pulled and replanted and done properly. So you don't have to consult with the warden. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. He's my, he's my designate. There we go. It's perfect. He's, he's, he speaks for the Lorax. Oh, he's going to be that. I know that's one of your proudest you know, titles is tree warden. One of the best. You're welcome. Yeah. Item five is um, Frederick Laura Homestead. So, and I want to just a little bit the background for this. Um, the, I'm, I am challenged to create, I'm created, create a, the challenge and creativity, but Deb, um, at the last couple of meetings, after seeing the the urban tree forest on the tree, yeah. just say, hey, maybe we need to have AJ come down and give us a little lesson on on um, tree identification, evergreen identification. But, gee, that's a great idea. What did I think of that? And uh, the um, so it was very, I thought it was great. And um, I thought, you know, might be, that might be a nice idea to do in each meeting. And, and Pat always sends us very interesting stuff. And um, so I said, she that she'd be comfortable in leading a discussion on, I, I would suggest pollinators. Right. They've done something on that. I, I, I missed the webinar because I posted. So she suggested uh, Frederick Logan to and I. That's that's great. And so that is what led to that being yeah. here in the and little did I know that Deb could have probably done a better job here, but she's actually uh, has a lot of engineering. But what brought me to Olmsted, aside from knowing about him for years um, when I took my tree courses, is um, well, two things. We were visiting our son in uh, Western Mass and visited the Smith College Botanical Gardens and walked the grounds. And I realized that that was Olmstead Olmstead design. And then I happened to be in the library looking at the new nonfiction books, and I came across this one, which mm -hmm. I will pass around, which is basically just a, a snapshot of all the states where there are different property that he has um, created had a, had a uh, was an instrument in developing. So I bought a copy because I was overdue and returning the other one. And so um, I'll just pass around these, which is also just a list of his properties. And I will just spend a few minutes talking about uh, Olmstead. Um, and hopefully I won't bore you because many people know of him, but last year was his 200th birthday. And uh, so there was a celebration, nationwide tree plantings. Um, so when I was doing a quick dive into his life, um, this is what I learned. So he, he was born in 1822 in Hartford, Connecticut, and that's where he is buried. Um, his mother died when he was four years old. He was not a serious student. He sort of moved around to different ministers to learn. And, uh, but he never stopped learning, even though he was not a student. Um, his life experiences educated him more than books. He was a gentleman farmer. He was a merchant seaman. He traveled to China for a year. Um, he was a journalist an abolitionist, conservation, an artist, a prolific letter writer, and a visionary, most importantly. Um, each of his endeavors, some were very brief, honed his vision. His days as a gentleman farmer enabled him to understand soils and drainage, which was necessary when he was developing Central Park. His travels throughout the South as a journalist for what was then a very young New York Times led him to becoming an abolitionist. He co-founded the Nation magazine and was an early voice against slavery. 
As a child, and until he was 16, he traveled with his father on horseback in search of vistas throughout New York State. Most influential, though, in his vision of landscape architecture was his trip in 1850 to Liverpool, England, uh, where he visited Birkenhead Park. In America at that time, cities were growing, industrializing. They were not healthy, and they were not fragrant. Those of means uh, went to their country estates, and the workers remained in the cities where there were no parks because they didn't exist at that time. Um, people used cemeteries for parks, and they would picnic in cemeteries, but they never knew. <laughs> I'm not worried about this. So for Olmsted, Birkenhead Park made a huge impression because it was the first park created by the public's money for the people. So in 1857, so seven years after he visited the park, he became the supervisor of Central Park. And a British American architect named Albert Fox convinced Olmsted to join him in a competition for a plan to how to develop the 775 acres and they won the competition. So they remained partners for many years, although Vox hardly received the acclaim which Olmsted did. They accomplished more together as a team than they could have accomplished alone. So um, again, for Central Park design, his impression was what he saw at Birkenhead. During the Civil War, a few years later, he served as head of the Sanitary Commission, which was the precursor to the American Red Cross. He then went to Mariposa, California, and managed California's largest gold mine. And then he also began conservation efforts for Yosemite. Fox convinced Homestead to return from California, and they created Prospect Park in Brooklyn, which was then, I believe, the third largest city. And they wanted a park that rivaled Central Park. So he not only created parks, but park systems. And in Buffalo, which was also a booming city, uh, Olmsted created three large parks, which became America's first park system. Parkways were tree lined and threaded the city's neighborhoods. The result was more of a city within a park. He created the grounds for the Chicago World Fair in 1893, which is a monumental task. Um, there are way too many works to recognize, but the public access to Goat Island at Niagara Falls is something he worked on. And we all know of the Emerald Necklace throughout Boston that goes on for, I forget how many miles. Um, Homestead believed the parks should be active with people, but it should provide respite from city life. And most of all, he believed that park should be democratic. And, and that is really um, what his vision was, again, based on what he saw at Bur Birkenhead. So while he's considered America's father of landscape architecture, at the time, there was no formalized course of study in this country until he helped her formulate one. And his two sons were among the 11 who founded the American Society of Landscape Architecture in 1899. His work was prolific and a lot of it was carried on by his sons under the name of Olmsted Brothers so that the Olmsted name lived on for many years beyond his death in 1903. And I will say um, it was, uh, <clears throat> When he was 75, I believe, he moved to 81. The last five years of his life, he spent at McLean Hospital in Waltham. And those grounds he also developed years before. So um, it, was, it was just, it was sort of like this came full circle because my mother also spent the last <clears throat> couple of months of her life at McLean Hospital. And I, before she was ill, and they both had dementia, that's why they were there. But um, I remember, because we lived in the suburbs of Boston, uh, admiring the playing grounds. And, and all of his parks, the ones that you've had the pleasure to go to, what he was striving for was that you would have this antidote to city life, that 
it provided this contemplation and this peaceful and calmness that you don't even realize is happening. And then when you leave, you sort of get the full, full uh, experience, I would say. So, um, so that is a brief, very really hard to sum up his life and his and his expectations and uh, accomplishments. But he, he explained that the very reason of for being of the park is opportunity for pleasurable and soothing relief from building, where building for other purposes begins than the park end. So, of course, thinking about that and coming back to Portsmouth, are we already incorporating Olmsted's principles? And we have so many components in the city, thanks to many of you at this table, um, that I believe are incorporating his principles. And, and so I, I think the question I have is, and we're also doing work in the cemeteries, which is fabulous. And um, so they are also, considered parks in a way, even though today we don't think of them that way. But it, I mean, and Michael, you've added so many trees over there to the cemetery and it's, it's, it's just a beautiful place for people to have the same effect of all sets parks. So can we thread our neighborhoods? I'm trying to think of how we can do this better and have all of you discuss it. Can we can we connect our neighborhoods better? Um, I mean, our Market Street extension uh, improvements that we did are just beautiful. And every time I drive down there, I smile. And that that's kind of the same vision of a parkway um, that Olmsted used. So can we make improvements? And what do you think? <laughs> Where do we go with? Are we happy with what we've done? Where what we're planting a lot of trees, but it, is there a vision as to an angle? So, one thing we could look at doing uh, potentially bringing a um, map or figure in highlight the green spaces and parks uh, throughout the city, um, and if there is a logical you know, I, I think of you know. I think about connectivity. I think about um, the equity. Um, you know, and, and allowing you know, and specifically, you know, typically I think about this in the terms of you know, uh, pedestrian bicycle connections. Um, you know, there are areas mm -hmm. in the city that are islands and they're trapped by roads and they can't get to places. But the same is true for them to be able to appreciate green spaces. You know, we've been very fortunate with the expansion of Little Harbor Road. Um, the green spaces there that have become, you know, as we all experience, sacred ground uh, for many people. Uh, but there are a number of places in the city that, you know, Jones Avenue is a great example. Um, the, the railroad corridor, which is currently, uh, the contract has been selected and the, the Department of Transportation has a project that's going to start this spring uh, to create that bicycle rail trail. And that is going to open up a lot of green space or folks down near the uh, end of the town. Um, and the, the idea of that connectivity. Um, and to a certain extent, the recently completed uh, recreational master plan looked at that. It, it, it identified green space, it identified parks, and it looked at it looked at connectivity, it looked at uh, radius of, of reach for each of the areas. Um, uh, so that's a, a decent starting point uh, for. The committee, you know, if there's things that you know, and and the vehicle to to do that first would be, you know, you take a figure, come up with a vision, and then if there are projects that are connectivity projects or expansion projects, things like that, the committee could then say, let's have this brought forward as part of CIP. You know, there are monies every year set aside for parks, uh, playgrounds, uh, so there are funds available out there. Um, if the committee is interested in, in kind of you know, creating a different vision, I, I feel like you know you all do a great job, um, you know, advocating for the green spaces and trees, and mm. you know, it's, a, it's a logical extension of what you're doing. The, the open space committee was trying to do some of this work when they were talking about bike paths and stuff like that, because we provided them maps for our facility to put yeah. on the city website. So there's a 
There's a group that was doing some of this with some previous city planner. She was heading all that up. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the, there was the open space committee, the open open space plan. The the existing council um, is looking at a parks and recreation vision, which, you know, frankly, I think there's, I think we have the pieces. We don't need to create another committee. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, powering the existing entities to realize that they have that. That was going to be um, a question. Because um, I cut up at the end of the last meeting. Um, and I know it's written in minutes, but the discussion uh, where the governance committee was looking at that, I didn't know that that had had um, any discussion with the last meeting here. Of, as Peter said, there was been discussion of whether the green space um, and greenery space comes to increase greenery and kind of the open, clean park space. Or if that goes to the rec department or where that goes. And I didn't know if there was any more discussion at the last meeting on that and or what this committee felt about of the potential expansion of our roles past just trees and green areas to include potential open spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my, one of the programs that I want to highlight here is the adopt a spot. But let's don't underestimate the adopt a spot. I think that's that's been a wonderful community service. I my garden club we participated. We've been doing it for eight, nine years. We did a little kickoff. Uh, we talked about pollinators. We talked about natives. We talked about biological corners. How we could all kind of thread our neighborhoods, personal neighborhoods, to the larger community. Um, and then when COVID came, it became even more important for people to get out. And those became very useful. I, we did have who was that woman that headed up the Doctor Spot program when I sort of. Brittany, or she's not here any longer, but having one person sort of as a touch. Yeah, Corin, Corin I believe, is, is still a point on the adopt spot. The challenge is it's, to a certain extent, it's it's not extracurricular, but it is beyond what its day-to-day -day stuff is, so it's hard right. um, to do that um, on a consistent basis. We used to have a, uh, an annual appreciation, um, mm -hmm. and we, we had talked about potentially doing a kickoff this year um, just to kind of refigure it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, again, it's the, it's on top of a lot of other things that we're trying to accomplish. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff and, you know, they're, they're great um, ideas. Um, yeah, it's a matter of bandwidth. And I know that it's not a great expression, but it's a matter of our having the resources to be able to accomplish all these uh, all these things and do all the other stuff that the uh, baseline work that we have to do. Right. But there is a lot of civic pride that comes from it, uh, and people. We we we're right now. We were on. We were on um, uh, what State Street down the corner. You know that's where we first originally started on State and um, when they get Little. Crushed on a regular basis. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, I came around the corner one time. We spent two hundred dollars, and there's a truck sitting right in there. I was furious, so we moved. And now we are uh, um, at the entrance of the North Cemetery. Get so many people come by, they talk. It's a real center of activity. It's it's a good green ambassador moment for our, our club. So I, I do think the adopt a spot is a, a way to maybe connect with people. Um, I know that in Portsmouth Smart Growth, we also talk about connected walkability, we talk about cooling stations of trees, you know, those types of things. Um, we're getting there. But Peter, this was also something that the governor committee would do. Governance. Governance. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so what's that what I was just talking about? Oh, that there's the, the conversation of that it does feel like some of our open spaces aren't necessarily utilized or kind of just going off this discussion and we don't plan for that type of state that isn't recreational, that isn't the sports fields and things like that. And so there's, it, it seems to be, as Peter just said, the conversation of is there a committee that can take on that or does there need to be a separate committee? My personal opinion would be to expand the role of this committee to include parks um, versus handing it off to the rec department or to, I mean, as Peter said, I don't think we need another committee. Mm -hmm. And if we have the, re have the resources and the talent within the committees that we already have. So it's, I think, I'm not sure if anyone went to this governance committee. Okay. Yeah, I watched watched it. 
um, after the fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pat mentioned the uh, Market Street extension, and, mm -hmm. and you know, we just talked about what the, what's going on, and, and it, it, that Market Street extension, the Lafayette Road, um, up by the Bolarama, that yes. improvement, yes. Um, just all the redoing of all the downtown streets. I mean, the city in the last 25 years has just been involved in so much uh, better and, yeah, um, and, and you know and it really makes us think that you know we really got to be vigilant and keep going but it's and whenever i see something like the the uh, those things any of these improvements think that was somebody's idea and um you know and all the parks you know, i was surprised in the Olmstead thing that there were no parks before before 1860 or whatever yeah. We had, you know, cemeteries, which now we realize, hey, that's a pretty neat thing. And Michael does, a, you know, all of his planning, but just that is a, an asset. And then and we had commons in New England, but most of them are gone. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of, um, you know, recognizing what we have and how to improve it. I mean, I, I'd be curious how one of these discussions with, with Dick would probably you know the history of all the parks and Portsmouth. How, well, how did, why is, why is there a, um, how did any of these parks come to be, whose idea was it? And the, the city in the last several years, we did every park, I think, remember David Moore had a project. Uh -huh. And um, so, um, but I, I this is, you know, fascinating with Olmsted, the Swansea Parkway, just looking in that book in Exeter, I never knew that was Olmsted. <laughs> I think now that we are going through we're sort of um, downtown housing is becoming more dense and we're looking at micro um, uh, units that people are really going to be looking for outdoor spaces to uh, join in. Um, yes, I, I, and activating winter outside is another wonderful thing where you have community fire pits. I mean, there's a lot. Wooden benches are lovely. I know it. I would love an outdoor. Yeah, I would love it because we'll be in between the next season. There's a bunch of burn piles over on cloud. Let me go off the show. See, today we're burning off today. So we're burning off the show. Yeah. See, see, but that would be something that maybe next year it does turn into something of, of a community event. I know the other community much smaller, but I know like Milton and Farmington, mm -hmm. and they're doing their community burns. They become little community gathering gathering yeah. so yeah. food trucks yeah sure the has always brought people together the winter of the light wooden benches are very important for winter city i know some other smaller communities you know i know i know i said nothing but that it's a big thing up there every year that you know, it's, you get a couple hundred people and families, and it becomes a reason for people to come out during during that time of year. Yeah. And you're siloed. Yeah. I, I think I, I think this is a great uh, conversation. Had started. Yeah. I think what my takeaway from Olmstead was that he definitely believed in, in uh, parks were a place of social justice. It's where you know the guy that owned the factory and the guy that works the factory passed each other yes. you know, and enjoyed and were equal. Yes. It was all accessible. And the well being that parks provide for urban settings, especially during COVID, that was punctuated even stronger. So I, I definitely. The other note, um, you mentioned the social justice is uh, when Central Park opened, women were able to bicycle and mm -hmm. ice skate oh, God, freely. This idea of the walk to the something in your neighborhood. And I mean, the, you know, the White Mountain National Forest is great, but most of us can't go there every day. Well, I think it's it also highlights, and while we didn't sign it, I think it one of my favorite cities to visit is Savannah. Mm -hmm. And part of it is the 21 parks and how they're all anchored by a community, whether it's a synagogue, a church, a jail, a courthouse, a school, they're all anchored, and you just 
walk from one to the other to the other. Fun fact about that, if you're down there, most every park has a statue in the middle. Most of the people are are correct. Most of the people are not correctly labeled that are buried underneath there. As they as they've redone these parks over the last 20 to 30 years and they've done DNA, DNA testing and they found that they are most of them are not aligned with who they think they are. <laughs> Yeah. Which I've done. Um, but, but again, it's it's that every every neighborhood, you know, and it's, it's really it's lovely to just walk and you go through these shops and these buildings and then you hit another park and there's grass stations and there's water stations and unless cars in a way. I always felt like the rain. Yeah, you have to stop and turn and go and it's traffic calming like out the stations. Well, I thought is that I, when in Portsmouth, where I feel the most as though I'm on an Olmsted property, is that the open water shoes and yeah. Yeah. really get that sense there are different types of areas where you can walk and there are choices. You have the water, you have the forest, you have the arboretum. It's, it's um, that's the feeling that I think walking in Olmsted property gives to anyone. No, totally. <laughs> no, I, 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 we do have homes that break. The guys take care of that once a year, so you can you can do it. Well, actually, probably um, get back to the agenda and ask: Is there any old or new business? Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I guess I'm not straight. Apologies, I have to take the watch that government's meeting. Of what was there any discussion? Um, about the the potential of, of this committee, and I guess you could fill in the rest. The ruling is to report that what we do more than you know. But to Peter's point, is if this committee would be actively involved, more actively involved with the parks, I think it would, would be very beneficial. So if they created an outline, but I don't think of a specific plan to go forward immediately with. So yeah, if, if this committee would like, I can touch base with Councilor Cook, who's the chair of that committee, and yes. who's working on that. Um, get I'm there. Waiting for to reach back out to us. So one of the things, word of caution, and the reason I'm, I've been kind of like adamant about, it, don't go too expansive. Said we've worked very hard over the years to to break down silos and barriers, like this is our turf, this is your turf, and this there was historically a lot of redundancy in terms of the work that was being done and thereby not doing nobody was doing it well mm -hmm. um and so we've worked very hard to to like on the parks and maintenance and, and recreational maintenance the infrastructure side of things has been has been consolidated under you know our group which is the green East parks and cemeteries group and the the, it, the move to create another department with its own infra, with its own equipment with its own staff with its own it, it it, dil it will dilute, I think, our ability to do the work. So I would, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I don't think additional committees are necessary. I think the existing committees have the interest and the abilities, and also just don't fraction, don't don't create separate entities that are, you know, if we need to do a better job maintaining something, that's great. You know, give us clear policy direction, um, saying we want you to do more on this. Here are the resources to do that. Uh, versus saying we're going to create a whole new group that's going to mow parks versus mow ball fields, which you know, oh, no, I or, or agree roadways. I completely so I just I heard, the other night, I heard the other night about Councilor Tabor made a statement about creating a new department, which is not my. And I was just like, oh, okay, you can do that. That's your choice, uh, but I would not recommend. It. Yeah, I guess to to maybe clarify, my um, idea would be that we do not do that. <laughs> 100%, and that we we find a way to I think um, I think the piece is the incorrect word, but make sure that it is covered by committee, which I think is the governance um, committee's concern, is that they feel like it's a little bit of a of a gray area, and so saying that yeah we have you know this automatically should already potentially fall in the purview of this group. We have the infrastructure, we have the way that staff maintains it, and just kind of make sure that. Those two things speak, I yeah. think, as well. So, just more what, communication amongst well, what we have established. What one, one thought could be you'd have representatives from the rep committee attend, attend. you know, so have a designated mm -hmm. you know, staff, somebody within the committee attends both so that there's some 
cross communication. I think that's great. I think so. That's a great yeah. start. Yeah, you need some more. Yeah, well, that's that. That was my concern, and then by creating that, it's all of a sudden uh -huh. that's one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one, no need for parks and recreational. We already have it. Right, it, it, it's covered. It's just making sure that everyone feels secure and, and covered. Yep. So the uh, policy uh, goals not being met, and you know, you know what the policy goal is. I think oh. Joe has a new business title. Yes. So um, <laughs> I promised I wouldn't bring many debates, but I don't always stick to that. Um, I feel as if we um, have way too much paper that is presented to us every meeting. Not necessarily this. This is beautiful. But I more mean this. Um, so I don't know, if, and I know that not everyone has an iPad or, 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 or access to things, but I don't know if there's a way of, of reducing every time that we get a plan, whether it's just online. I know obviously this was well prepared and sent out to us. I know they're not, you know, always, but just looking at maybe going forward, trying to set some type of internal policy to reduce the amount of, of paper that is, I know that sounds silly, but. No, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, you know, it, it, no. And I, I wish we had. I, in fact, I guess I admitted some of this stuff to Max. I asked Max, asked Max at the end of the last week, um, hey, um, have we got the plans? And so Max said, and then I sent them out. But um, uh, we need to coordinate with the agenda, send it out. And I wish we had did this whole thing. Um, but I think maybe when they come to you, uh, maybe. Um, and I know they're we, used to other boards, you know, everyone of the boards. You know, it's, it, it, we, I jokingly said it one day, and I was like, it feels silly as the, as the protector of trees that we go through trees worth of, you know, paper a let's, year. Let's so it's it's not so. on our, I, I, I think all of us here um, have, have all sorts of screens or, or no six year olds that can open them up for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we, I'd rather have a chance to look at stuff before being. Yeah, uh, and then we have it on the screen. Yeah, and yeah. There's just one copy. Yeah, and, and frankly, we're doing posts. You know, there's nobody online right now, but they, people may check afterwards. There's no presentation that has that information on it. So we can work internally to try to type that up. Okay. Again, now two times second, you like yeah. and traffic and safety, we have a presentation of how's all the attachments. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's something that Max and I will will talk about, figure out how to yeah. support that. Absolutely. And okay. is there just last thing uh, tonight is the Islington Street uh, the finish of that is that what we that was brought in front of us uh, last fall about the trees and uh, yes, yeah, Stewart Park. So that's going to be covered again tonight. So good to listen up for yeah, the, the more depth or it's it's a um, it's a pre construction meeting, meaning you know here's the design that was already discussed, already reviewed, already approved. We're moving forward with it. Here's how it's going to happen. We're going to tear up the street from here to here. Okay. We're going to be parking the excavator in Goodwin Park. So people are going to freak out mm -hmm. because the dogs are going to be <laughs> yeah, you know, running around. It'll be protected by a construction fence, but they'll be still be bought, you know, putting that piece of equipment in that park every day. Um, so it's really a coordination with the, the people who are impacted directly. Um, so that you know, if you have a delivery, if you have a special event, you have you know needs, you know whatever your needs are associated with it, and also talking through the sequence of construction, introducing the contractor, introducing our inspectors, um, just an opportunity for you know people to express their concerns or interests. But mostly, it's uh, here's what we're going to do, not asking you, but. Because yeah, you already it, asked it. There is no, yeah, there's no refining uh, <laughs> yeah, at this point. That's good. We're not I moving the curb line. We're not. Right. I think it's very important. Yeah. A lot of things are already asked. The project we did. Escaping that we talked about last fall is just, that's the same. It's moving forward. And that's it's moving right. forward. Great. There is. Okay. Yep. okay. Uh, Thank you. There is, I have a bit of a business as well. So just for everyone's knowledge, we, we are having that land surveyed. March 23rd for the cemetery behind South Street. Wow. Everyone is uh, March 23rd. And the public notice has gone up to providing property to the owners, right? I'm working on that. Yep. Have we heard any? I know that there were 
like two residents that really oppose the request from the cemetery committee? I don't know if it was an opposition of the request. It was more of the expressing their concern with regard to the trees being removed, okay. which we hadn't determined based on not having the the, the survey. So we'll be able to mark those trees following. Yeah, that. once once we have an idea of where what we're looking at as far as property, we'll go through and, and determine what what should and she should did, she envisioned that pathway would be clear. Wait, and that, that was never she and she uh, you may be right. Oh, uh, sure. There was a clarification uh, on both what was being asked and what was, yeah, and that's, and yeah. We, we took care of it. They seemed happy when they left, and they continued to yeah. work on that. You will keep them informed, right? Absolutely. So, Michael, did you have something? I was just curious as to the, the mm -hmm. overall condition of the trees that were planted on PSI were replacing all the red plants. Yeah, uh, I think we lost only three or four of those trees that we replanted. Um, with plans to replant this room. So any any vacant you know, units, all those are all all segments. I think we lost one of those actually. Uh, it, I mean, it, we're going to go out and inspect all the all last year's plantings this spring, see if there's budding, anything like that. Usually, that's we give about a year before we, unless it's so evidently dead that we just remove it right then and there. So we'll we'll give it a little bit of time to try and establish and put something out. Salmon Falls has already replaced the trees on the John Boat Echo Park. Those, nope. So we are also replanting those this spring as well as part of the 200 uh, that DPW is, is committing. So that's, I think we're out, outside of the contract for that project. As my understanding is, we, we have now inherited that entire project. So every tree, all the turf, everything is now. Warranty period's over. There it is. Warranty period is over. Um, and the uh, of the, the cleanup at Spinnaker, um, that's not the city. That is the managed company of Spinnaker. The cleanup of uh, the, the tree removals? Yeah. That is us this Friday, actually. Yep. So uh, our crew, we're going to go out and fell for our trees. The facility will be closed. We can exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for what it's worth, you can, I'm sure you're familiar with those trees. They're all... We're all stone dead, so I didn't feel it was appropriate to, yeah, so. And the other old new uh, media business, I just yeah. wanted to, my time as we had on the community here, we um, had, had very little city council representation. So I just really wanted to inspire that. Listen, thank the mayor, because he was out of town, so I, Helped with Arbor Day last year, and I, I immediately was like, "Why do we not have a council on this committee?" So, I mean, I, I remember, you know, obviously learning more and more about about us being a you know national Arbor City and all of that. But when I was kind of gaining more information, and now for me, it's great because I I feel so often with you know the development, as you say, private lot that we have minimal control over. You know, people are always saying, well, we, we don't have any trees and we don't have any green space. And now I have, I feel like I've learned so much. There are, yes. And it's it's another proud thing. But so anyway, I'm glad to be here. Thank you all. Thank you. And I feel like I'm, this is the one I look forward to because I know always I'm going to learn something when I'm, that I never knew. It's a feel good committee. It's a feel good committee. It's a feel good committee. It's a feel good Yeah, 